Look at this, folks. My dinner tonight is a lovely gourmet lasagna. Mm -mm. That's the stuff of champions there, folks. A Findus beef lasagna microwavable meal. You can't get any better than that. As healthy and nutritious as this lasagna may seem, there's something about this lasagna that caused all the rage back in Europe in the year 2013. And that was that this lasagna was filled with meat, but not just any meat, horse meat. And the worst thing of all is that everybody was none the wiser. This is Brain Spill, my name is Tank, and today we're talking about the horse meat scandal. You know what they say, there's nothing like flogging a dead horse. <laughs> uh, anyway. So, how did this scandal make its way out of the barn and into the public consciousness? Before we jump in, if you liked the video, be sure to subscribe to never miss an upload. The saga commenced in January 2013, when the Food Safety Authority of Ireland undertook routine tests on beef products circulating in the Irish market. To their astonishment, the results revealed traces of horse DNA in a myriad of processed beef products, ranging from burgers to other convenience foods. The first positive test for equine DNA, or horse, was on the 10th of December 2012, to which they then conducted a further 18 tests shortly thereafter, probably just to make sure that this wasn't just a one-off case of a loose horse or a false positive test. But oh no, these products contained horsey. They contained horse meat. And after doing these tests, they realized, okay, we've got a bit of a problem here. Just how much horse is in this beef? Eurofin Laboratory in Germany tested beef burger products made from, apparently, a cow, and was not meant to contain the meat of a horse. However, these particular beef burgers had 29% equine DNA, which means that almost 30% of your beef burgers on these particular products were made out of My Little Pony. The following day, the Food Safety Authority of Ireland notified the five retailers who had stocked items that had the positive horse meat tests, this being Aldi, Lidl, Iceland, Tesco and Dunn stores, who all immediately pulled products from store shelves. The day after, well, the papers got the story, and then, well, good luck getting that story back in that horse meat container now. A little bit too late for that. The initial revelation in Ireland sent shockwaves throughout Europe, prompting an immediate expansion of investigations beyond the national borders. The scope of the contamination soon became apparent when authorities in the UK, France, Sweden, Germany and other countries, who all began uncovering similar instances of horse meat also being found in products being sold within their borders. The widespread nature of the scandal suggested systematic failures within the intricate web of the European food supply chain. Someone had been grinding up those horses on the sly for a little bit too long. The public reaction to the horse meat scandal was swift and damning. Consumers accustomed to assuming the accuracy of product labelling were absolutely shocked to discover that what they were eating, which they thought was just normal cow beef, was in fact a completely different animal. The shock not only pertained to matters of consumer choice, but also raised profound concerns about the potential health risks associated with the consumption of undisclosed meats. I'm fairly sure I'm not the first person that's ever said that in either that context or any other context, but either way, it ain't a good thing. Thankfully, the inclusion of horse meat in these products, according to the authorities, didn't pose much of a health risk to the public. It was less so about there being any inherent health danger here, but more so about consumer choice and actually being aware of what you're about to eat. Which, um, I mean, I don't blame people. If someone said I'm eating a cow, I expect to be eating a damn cow. Just saying. I mean, the sheer audacity. No wonder I've had a long face for so long. As the scandal unfolded, governments and food safety authorities across affected nations took decisive action. Large-scale testing initiatives were launched to ascertain the true extent of the mislabeling and contamination. The results were quite simply alarming, prompting widespread recalls and withdrawals of implicated products from supermarket shelves. Beyond the economic consequences for implicated companies, the scandal eroded public trust in the food industry and some businesses faced significant financial losses and, of course, reputational damage. 
Further investigations by the House of Commons Select Committee on Environment, Food and Rural Affairs produced a report which did not point the finger at any of the UK or Irish producers, but went as far to claim that there was fraud and criminal activity across the European Union. The chair of the committee, Anne McIntosh, said that the evidence suggests a complex network of companies trading in and mislabeling beef or beef products which is fraudulent and illegal. This is quite extraordinary and there's not really been much like this in recent memory, so of course people were understandably concerned. So why was I riffing on Findus beef lasagna earlier? Well there's a very particular reason for that. On the one hand, well, it was one of the most memed things at the time when it first came out in the news. But as well as that, there was a particular reason that Findus themselves were so memed about, and that's because they, beyond probably most other people, had a lot of horse meat. <laughs> a little bit too much, some might say. So, what's so crazy about this Findus beef lasagna? Well, it came from the fact that after some further testing of 18 lasagnas, 11 of them were found to have contained between 60 to 100% horse meat. A primary source of the meat was eventually linked to a Romanian-based slaughterhouse, which, when packaged, was sent out and labelled as horse meat, as you'd expect. But somewhere along the chain, these labels got removed and replaced with pure old beef, and nobody knew. You'll be glad to know that people were arrested and charged for this, which, well, I damn well hope so, because this was an absolutely huge scandal, but there we are. In response to the crisis, regulatory bodies revamped and fortified existing food safety measures. Stricter regulations were implemented to monitor and enforce compliance throughout the entire production and distribution process. Moreover, there was a heightened emphasis on the development and adoption of standardised testing procedures to prevent future incidents. Basically, they found a way to stop trying to cram horse meat inside normal beef products. It should really seem like a simple lesson, but for some, well, They'll try it on, nonetheless. I wouldn't mind giving horse maybe a try once in my life. Maybe. Although if I'm going to do it, I'd rather know that I'm eating it rather than something completely different. So uh, there we are. If you guys like that video, here's another one just like it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.